construction, engineering, water treatment companies. He's got many published articles in various industry magazines uh, prior to getting into the swimming pool industry. So he's, gonna hear, he's here to talk to us about an eco-friendly approach to the backyard pool. Please welcome Clint. Thank you. Thank you. Well, first things first, I normally don't walk around with a cane. I had knee surgery, so please forgive me. Two more weeks and I can give it up. But I'll tell you what, it hurt the first couple of days having knee surgery. Anybody's had it? Uh, no pity. Uh, basically today, we're going to give you a glimpse of what tomorrow is going to have in store for all of us. We're going to talk about things that haven't been talked about or have been talked about in small pieces and now we're going to talk about them, that there's real solutions now to things that we've only heard about in the pool industry, particularly in, as it involves environmental and sanitation. So you'll see that coming up here in just a bit. Hopefully the clickers all work. But first, a word from who we are. How many people really know Waterco? I got four hands. That's fantastic. We need to make that 400 hands up there. And the only way to do that is to get up and talk to you about these kinds of things. We've been around for a long time. We're one of the innovators in this business on a worldwide basis. That's what we do. We got a bunch of PhDs that come up with some new stuff. And they're gonna, you're going to see some of that today. Who is Waterco? By the way, it's only two slides as far as the advertisement to give you an understanding of who we are. We're a publicly listed company in Australia. We're out of Sydney, Australia. We used to be the Baker Hydro Group here in the United States. How many remember? Well, they're going to have to put a lot of people's hands up. Baker Hydro has been around a long time. They were the innovators back in the day. They came up with all the new stuff back in the day. Basically, we're, you know, like any other multinational company, we're 40 uh, companies, we're in 40 countries. We got seven manufacturing plants, 500 employees, we're ISO 9000, all the things you'd expect from a world, you know, worldwide company. We're just not known here very well in the United States. We're the big 800 pound gorilla over in Asia and, and in Australia and New Zealand. We're becoming that in Europe. But the United States is still the small part of our business. And now we're bringing the new technologies here to see if we can make a difference in the swimming pool industry. Today we're going to talk about the topics I've got up here. I put it a remarkable changes to the backyard pools. It all starts in the backyard pools before it gets to the commercial side. All starts there. You try it out in a small scale. And we'll talk about that today. But what we want to do is bring in the environmental side of this, the green side of this. Because when it really comes right down to it, don't you want to have a system that works that's both economical, saves money, saves water, saves heat, saves chemicals, easy to maintain, and it's green. It's green. Isn't that, you know, I'm an environmental engineer. I am not a tree hugger. I'll tell you that right up. I heard that today. Somebody bring up the tree hugger stuff. I'm not a tree hugger. I'm definitely a pragmatic engineer who has said, you know what? There are ways to do it to still save the environment, save money without going out there with a sign that says, get rid of chlorine in my pools. We're not going to do that. We'll start from the ground up. We'll build a better system. We'll build a better mousetrap. So we came up with this concept called the EnviroPro concept. EnviroPro. Little background first. 50, 75 years ago, according to my friend Terry, we've been using chlorine. Your grandfather's pool 75 years ago is basically the same pool we have today. It's got basically the same stuff. A sand filter, chlorine, a pump, etc., etc. 
It's all the same that great granddaddy used. If that's the case, why aren't we driving ramblers? Why aren't we still talking on a phone that's attached to the wall? Because technology has moved forward. And it's time the pool industry embraces technology and goes forward with some new things that are not the same as great granddaddies. Here's some of the things that we want to talk about today, some of the topics. We want to make sure things are, you know, the newest. Oop. I'll get used to this. We want to make sure it's the newest technology. We want to make sure we talk about both backyard and commercials. We want something that's effective and efficient in the commercial environment, not just for your backyard home pool. We want to make sure all the other technical things are done, that it's all hydraulically balanced. We want zero discharge to the pool or the pool water. No water leaves that system. Come on, Clint, you can't do that. Well, we've got ways that we can mitigate that and don't put any water down to the sewer. Well, yes, we may have to backwash. Yes, we may have to do some other things. But we're not going to send it out to the sewers. I'll show you that today. We got some new engineered medias that we're going to be introducing. These are engineered medias. They're made specifically for the industry. It's not going out with a shovel and digging up some sand, sieving it out correctly, putting it in your filter. How about if we engineer that media and we start using that? That changes the game. And obviously, the EnviroPro concept. What we're really trying to get across with this is it saves energy, it saves time, it saves water, it saves chemical, it saves heat, and it saves money. Somebody last night said to me, when I told him this, he goes, you want the perfect system, don't you, Clint? And I said, you're damn right. That's what we're trying to strive for, the perfect system, where it saves everything you're trying to save and still works well. And last but not least, it's affordable. It's affordable. The premise today is to think green. God, you've seen that a thousand times. But how are we going to bring that into the, the swimming pool industry? Thinking green. It requires a lot of engineering to think green. That's what we've been doing. That's what we've been squirreled away with all the PhDs down in, down in uh, Sydney, Australia, at our home office. That's what they've been doing. And we're going to show you that today. Here is the basic premise of the EnviroPro approach. The basic premise is a very, I apologize, is a holistic approach and solution. In other words, we're going to try to take care of everything all at once. We're going to make sure it works correctly and harmoniously. And basically, it's the design to help the environmentally conscious pool owner to save everything, to make it work, make it to work properly save water, energy, all those good things we just talked about. Here's the goals of this approach. Lofty goals, I call them. When they gave those to me, I go, no way, guys. That's too much to do. You can't accomplish this. But we got it. We figured it out. We put it together. We came up with new technology. And you're going to get a little taste of that tomorrow in just a little bit. But here they are. Don't forget, we still got to have nice. We got to have nice, clean, and clear water in our pools. They got to be fully sanitized, easy to use, repeatable, simple maintenance. They got to be non-toxic. You don't want your kids swimming in toxic pools. Sorry, Terry, but you know we want to take away chlorine. We want to go non-chlorine. We want to figure that out. We got it figured out. We want to make it energy efficient. Save some energy. On top of all that, don't forget that zero discharge to the sewer, and last but not least, the affordability. That's a picture of where I want to be. In a few more years, when I retire, maybe do some consulting, but at the same time, that's the kind of pool that I want, overlooking a beautiful inlet to a harbor where I can go sailing, enjoy myself, and put in a system like the EnviroPro. By the way, this is one that has it. How does it work? I'm not going to tell you everything. 
some of it's patented technology, some of it's secret technology, but you know what? I'm going to give you a broad brush today. There are seven basic components to this approach. These are the major portions. I'm not going to give you all of them, but these are the seven that are going to change the way we look at filters and look at uh, swimming pool water. Number one, we need to have filter properly balanced, hydraulically balanced filter equipment. That means it's got to have the minimal amount of elbows and turns and pressure drops and all that kind of stuff. We've got to have it at an absolute bare minimum. Simple to do. Probably half the people in this room can do that with half their brain tied behind back. But it's just part of the program. We want to engineer the media. I talked about that. And unfortunately, that's going to take about 20 minutes to cover. So it's, I'm not going to cover that portion today. The engineered, the engineered glass material that we've developed, they're called glass pearls. And these glass pearls now can filter down all the way, appropriately, to 3 micron. High density, they pack tighter. They give you small interstices. You can get better filtration. And they're one and done. You put them in, they're the life of the pool. You don't change the sand like you do in sand filters. You don't change glass pearls. Oh, wait a minute, Clint, what about if they get calcified? What are you going to do? You've got to shovel them out of there. Well, we have something called muriatic acid, hydrochloric acid. It'll take care of it. You can uncalcify them, put them back to normal, get them running again. One and done. But unfortunately, I can't talk about that because I'm going to talk about more important things. But in this, uh, in this EnviroPro approach, you've got a variable speed or variable frequency pumps. You want to save energy. You want to put 21st century smartphone technology in there so you can call up your swimming pool and tell it what to do. But even better, let's have the swimming pool call us and tell us what needs to be done. Or tell it to automatically adjust. There's a lot of people that got automatic systems and stuff. But to tie it all together in one system is what our goal is. And that's what we're trying to do here, is tie it all together. Hey, don't forget, the old sun is here out. Let's use that for solar absorption of heat, to heat it up. Another environmentally friendly way of taking care of things, using a solar absorber. We got that as part of the program. The last two are what we're going to spend most of our time on today, because they're the most germane to this group. And that is the hydrocyclonic technology invented by Waterco. What it does, it's basically a Dyson for water. You guys have all seen the Dyson commercials? Come on, somebody say yes. <laughs> seen the Dyson commercials? You know, it does a good job. If you've ever seen a Dyson vacuum, they really work very well. Well, guess what? We got the patents on the water side. They're ours. We've got the product. And we'll talk about that technology a little bit today. And last but not least is cutting edge sanitation. We call it the hydroxy pure system. It's sweeping around the globe right now. It is becoming very dominant in Asia. It's sweeping into Australia, excuse me, sweeping into Europe, and it'll be coming to America. So I'm giving you a little look of tomorrow today. First topic, because we're only going to cover those bottom two. We're going to give you two chapters out of the seven chapters that I've got here, because there's no way I can spend four hours. I'd have to be beating everybody with my cane to keep them awake. So we're only going to talk about just two topics, the hydroxy pure and the multi-cyclone. That's it. That'll take up the 45 minutes or so that I have. Four years ago, a dad and his kids in Australia were sitting around a pool. All the kids were in the pool. Dad's sitting out, reading the newspaper. And one of the sons comes over, and he starts to cry. I can't go in the pool, Dad. I'm asthmatic. I get, break out in rashes. I get hives from the chlorine. I can't go in the pool. Come on, you're a smart guy, Dad. Fix it for me. Fix it so I can go in. Who would not do that for their son? All of us would. So it was a challenge he took on, this inventor, who works for us. He took the challenge on and went, oh my god, <laughs> how am I going to do this? How am I going to make it chlorine-free? 
oh, wait, we can't put any salt in there. That's cheating the system. That's just, chlor that's just chlorine in another form. We've got to make it non-allergenic. We've got to have it automatic. It's got to be easy. It's got to be safe to operate. It's got to be all the things we look for in a system. But it's got to be no chlorine, not mitigated small amount of chlorine, not adjusted chlorine and use other things. We want to eliminate it all together. I'm going to give you a little timeline of what's happened in the world. You probably know all this anyways. I'm relatively new to the swimming pool industry after 40 some years in water treatment doing this kind of stuff. This is new for me, so I had to go and do some research and get this done. But as you can see, the first time chlorine was the first time chlorine was used at Brown University in Providence, Rhode Island in 1910. Ultraviolet hit at the Hotel Pennsylvania Turkish Baths in 1919. First time that was used. Ozone, 1920. They've been around for a long time, beginning of the last century. And then silver ionization came in in the 1930s during the Depression, followed by, which I thought was hilarious, the green-haired carpet sulfate that went in in the 1960s. Women got their hair colored green when they came out. Followed by the salt chlorination, which was automated and patented in 1970. And then finally, in 1980, you saw Baquacel came in. The first time hydrogen peroxide hit the market. Came in in 1980, 35 years ago. Well, we've taken it to the next step in the last few years. We'll talk about that. But let's not forget the WHO guidelines. This is worldwide. We have to look at things not only from the US, but from the world. The WHO guidelines. What are they for swimming pools? You need to put in some type of, I'll eventually learn how to use this, by the way, guys. Uh, you have to put in some type of disinfection, some type of biological, biocidical chemical, something that oxidizes the organics, the microbiologicals that are in that water. You want to kill them. You want to kill them quickly. You want to get them, you want to fully burn them up, destroy them, just annihilate them is what your goal is. But oh, don't forget, you got to keep a residual too. You got to keep a residual. You all know the story. It's nothing different than what the regulations are here in the United States, are they? Kill it, keep a, keep a, a, a residual. Now that brings up another whole bunch of things that you got to talk about. How do I measure that residual? What if I decide I don't want to use chlorine? How much am I going to need to put in? How am I going to control it? How am I going to measure it? How am I going to test for it? I'm going to show you that here. Here are the choices you got today, guys, for sanitization in pools. Right there, simple as pie. Chlorine of some type of chlorine, any kind of variant compound of chlorine or hal halogen, you got to put that in. You've got saltwater chlorinators. Obviously, that's cheating, I call it, but still chlorine. I love it when a customer says to me, uh, or um, uh, someone who owns a pool, well, I, ju I just use salt water in my pool. You know, I just kind of chuckle and I don't embarrass them and tell them they're using chlorine. So, but that's just the way it is. It's, it's the way it's sold. Hydrogen peroxide, ozone, UV, some kind of ionizers. I think I've covered them all there as far as sanitation in a pool and what choices you have in 2015. Today, we're going to talk about these two, hydrogen peroxide and ozone. Nothing new to people here, right? How many have used those two in conjunction? Or how many have used ozone in their pools? Everybody should be raising their hands. They know all about that. Who've used hydrogen peroxide uh, type chemicals? Maybe spas, maybe some Bacosil or something like that. How about if we use it in regular swimming pools? But first, a little tech. First, a little tech. You've got to understand the AOP. You all understand AOP, so I'm not going to lecture today too much. Basically, it is, by definition, 
process which you get in situ powerful chemical oxidants such as ozone and hydroxyl radicals. Chemistry lesson, hydroxyl radicals, OH negative. You're familiar with that. You guys know what ozone is? O3. You got to have them in large enough quantities to be meaningful to enhance the oxidation and annihilation of a wide range of organic impurities and contaminated swimming pool water. I didn't print that. I think that comes from APSP. Anybody hear from them? But this is what it is. You've got to be able to do this. Once you're able to do this, you can sanitize the, 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 the pools. Now, why produce these specific ones? Why produce hydrogen peroxide, ozone? Why use hydrogen peroxide, ozone, and hydroxyl radicals? And I'll show you why. Not only are they the produced in the system that we're going to show you, but also, these are the preferred in water treatment and water recycling. I've been in that for 40 years. It is used regularly in those industries. Why hasn't this industry brought it on board? Crickets. I hear crickets. No answers. The answer is, we are going to bring it on board. We are going to put it in the systems. We are going to show that we can use things that have not, people haven't used in the past, and they maybe were really good, we're going to find out, we're going to use them here in the United States. And these are basically the hydroxyl radical, ozone, and hydrogen peroxide, all three in one system. And I'll show you that. I keep saying the same thing. We'll show you that. It's coming up in one of the slides. My favorite slide. As an engineer and as a chemist, chemical engineer, you look at these oxidation potentials up here. Where's chlorine? It's at the bottom. It's the worst one. Yeah, it might be cheap. It might be simple. Granddad started it, and great-granddad started, I should say. We're still using it today. But look at those others that we're going to be talking about in red up there. Look how much more effective they are in sanitation. And we'll, we'll, you'll see sometimes when you start combining some of these, you get a, a synergistic effect where you're getting 30 to 40 times the effectiveness of those versus chlorine. 30 to 40 times. It's my favorite slide, by the way. why this new technology works. It works because we've been able to put multiple things, redundant things and oxidizers together in one system and make it simple and affordable to use. We found the golden ticket of how to do it, how to control it, how to feed it, and how to talk to your smartphone to tell you what's going on. And those are the three we're using. Simple compounds, hydrogen peroxide, ozone, and hydroxyl radicals. And here it is, 30 to 40 times better than chlorine. A little chemistry lesson. What are we using here, guys? We're using H2O2, we're using O3, and we're using OH negative. Geez, I didn't choose many letters from the alphabet, did I? Oxygen and hydrogen, that's all I'm using. And I'm going to sanitize your pool. And it's going to work, and I'll break your arm if you don't like it. Because it's great when you get into a pool that's been done right. OK, so does it really work? Here's the list. You can read them as well as I can. The important one, obviously, everybody's, everybody's homing in on, crypto. But see, I've been in this business long enough on the water treatment side. That's maybe a nasty guy. But the one that's a couple of above that, it's a mycobacterium. I like to call mycobacteriums M&Ms. Hard on the outside, soft on the inside. And that hardness on the outside prevents anything from getting in to kill it. It's like having a shield on the outside. 
But strong oxidizers grab a hold of that shell and take a chunk of it out. And ozone and hydroxyl radicals are the ones to do it. Chlorine will nibble at the edges of those, but it doesn't kill them. And you guys have all heard, I'm sure, the MRSA, the methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. You've also heard of the tuberculosis, some of these strange strains that are floating around. They're passed through water, through water droplets. You want to make sure this thing is sanitized correctly. Can you tell I'm a little passionate about this? <laughs> So we went out and did some field trials. This is just one of them. We could you know, bore you with all those, but I'm not one of those PhDs that will bore you with all those kinds of details. Suffice it to say, suffice it to say, the bad, the bad actors that we went after, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, one colony forming unit per 100 milliliters. Chlorine can't match it unless you start overdosing this thing to beat the band. Look at Echerea coli, your gram negatives, guys that are tough to kill. After treatment of this, it's less than one. We call it uh, non-detectable. Stuff works. I'm going to tease you with this picture. Hopefully you can get the perspective here. It's looking into the water. The reason I put it up there is to show you that the use of these chemicals in this process oxygenates the water. Think about that. Oxygenates the water. It doesn't chlorinate the water. What goes through your skin? Any chemical that's in the water is going to go through your skin, whether it's chlorine, bromine, or oxygen. What do you want in your body? Why do you think the athletes won't have chlorine pools? because the chlorine affects their performance. The Olympians won't have it, neither will the major leaguers. They want ozone, they want hydrogen peroxide. They don't want to have chlorine in their pools. It's a damn good reason why they don't want to. Simple design, that was one of the criteria, right? We had to make it real simple. We had to make sure that we could get it done in a reasonable way. So we've done it the way traditional, traditionally everybody does it. We got a pump. We've got something called a dynamic injector, which we'll show you in a minute, a multi-cyclone, a standard filter, some type of heating, some type of chemical dosing it back to the pool and send it round and round again. Nothing special there. Nothing you haven't already seen. I've been keeping my premise. My premise is green technology, and I'm keeping to it. I'm sticking with it. We haven't done anything but oxygen and hydrogen, water. That's all we've done. Let's talk about how we generate this stuff. OK, we got, a, we got hydrogen peroxide. We can buy that anywhere, right? It's not the same hydrogen peroxide your daughter uses to bleach your hair. You certainly don't want to put that in. Why? Anybody know why? The cheap stuff is cheap because it has stabilizers in there. And those stabilizers have got something that help to grow bacteria, food called phosphates. They chew on that stuff and grow and multiply. You do not want to use the wrong kind of hydrogen peroxide because the stabilizer's in there. You'll be growing bacteria. But you use the right type, it'll work. Ozone, you need to create that. You got to have some type of automated dosing you got to have some disinfection measurable residuals. We'll talk about that. And this project, this process is not new. This has been around for 100 years or more. It's called the peroxone treatment process, PTP. How many of you have even heard of that? Not a single. We want to teach you that because it's the 21st century. Again, very simple interaction. You're going to take and you're going to put in hydrogen peroxide here into the system, into the pool. Out of the pool comes the water. You put in ozone into the system. You go through a multi-cyclone, which we'll talk about. You've got po powerful oxidation. It gets filtered out, and around it goes with more hydrogen peroxide, around and around. Very simple system. 
I'm going to give you ozone at a glance, because I know I'll run out of time if I don't. You guys are all familiar with ozone, so I don't really need to give you too much of knowledge on that, other than it's a powerful oxidant. It's going to rip the sides, rip apart any kind of organic that's in there, whether it's microbiological or just organic material. And it does, it's not only an oxidizer, which you remember we read in the WHO diagram, who, uh, um, uh, the WHO definition. It had to be an oxidant, and it's got to be a disinfectant. And we're following that with that this is both. And it works just like any other oxidant. It's going to tear a hole in the side of bugs. It's going to, uh, if you've got chlorine in the pool, it's going to take your chlorine out. It's going to oxidize that chlorine. So be careful if anybody's using ozone and chlorine. You're going to lose some of that. You're going to get, it's not going to be as effective. Chlorine will still work, but you may have to put a little bit more in. Obviously, any kind of iron, manganese, copper, any water and chemicals in there, chemicals in there, again, the water chemistry will be able to precipitate them out and take them out, making nice, crystal clear water. And obviously, it also or, or, uh, oxidizes the organics and makes them precipitate. And one more, some of the benefits, it destroys just about everything it comes in contact with. Does a great job on viruses. Does a great job on bacteria. Obviously, there's no odor, because it does break that down. You won't get any chloramines by using ozone. So you think maybe I'm selling ozone here? OK, thank you. I don't know if I'm going to make it. Uh, you're going to be using it in combination. We've got a, a hydroxone. The hydroxone generator of ozone not only generates ozone, but because we use a dual wavelength style that we've got a patent on, it not only does that, but it generates hydroxyl radicals at the same time. You're getting both of them. You get a two for one because it's using a dual wavelength. Not been done. I talked to a couple of the guys around here. I don't know if any of the Delta people are here, but I asked them, they don't, they don't, you don't make that. So it's really a new technology we're bringing to this industry to be able to do it two for the price of one. And it acts just like the sun. The sun itself produces ozone and hydroxyl radicals. So what we did, we copied what the sun does. The sun produces them. Let's figure out a way to do it here on Earth. And we did it. We've got it with a dual wavelength UV. The UV is the what creates the ozone. Regular UV can be affected when it creates regular, like coronal discharge UV, can be affected by temperature and humidity. This one can't. The dual, ozone, the dual one cannot be affected by temperatures or humidity. It's going to produce it constantly, regardless of the temperature or humidity. You're going to get the same today. You're going to get the same tomorrow and you don't care what happens to the environment around you. The beauty of this. And by the way, there's no moving parts. What does it do? It produces pure ozone. Ozone is not produced purely through UV. UV produces nitrous compounds and other compounds. That if you use it for disinfection and creating ozone, you're going to put those in the pool. The dual, the dual wavelength one does not produce that. It produces only pure ozone. Its output is constant because it's not affected by, come on, Clint, halfway through, you're still not pushing the right button. It's not affected by temperature, humidity. It's in one system that produces both uh, ozone and hydroxyl radicals. And the combination of the three of them, peroxide going in as a chemical, Ozone being generated in the ozonator, hydroxyl radicals being done in the ozonator. You now have the most powerful oxidizers, 30 to 40 times better than chlorine, going into your system. Just in case you forgot my favorite chart. Guys, it really does work.
Here's a little thing that tells you don't use standard ozone, excuse me, don't use standard UV to create your ozone, and the reasons why are very simple. It doesn't give you a steady output. It does create some harmful byproducts. It does create uh, uh, nitric acid, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Be careful. You can't put this thing together. You've got to use the right technology to do it. That's why it took four years to put it together. But OK, Clint, you did a good job. You told us all about this new technology. But now you've got to get it in the system. Wait a minute, you created ozone. You created hydroxyl, you pump in the other stuff, now you gotta get it in the system. We figured out that regular venturis to get it in were not good enough. The technology was not there. Now, I think it's called a Mateus or Mazaeus type injector. They're not, not, not as good. So we went and invented our own. We got patents on this. Because what we did is we found out that when you inject them correctly, you get better mixing, therefore effectiveness increases even again by putting in, again, some new technology and putting in a special venturi that goes in, uh, injects the ozone and hydroxyl radicals. Here's a simple home system. The light doesn't work. There it is. There's your ozone generator at the top with the hydroxyl radicals. It goes right into the injector down here, the venturi, standard pump. This hydrocyclone is right above the injector, so you're getting a maximum, maximum amount of reaction chamber, and then followed down to the filter. Nothing special here, is there? Nothing you haven't already seen in the systems of, of many, many pools. But we put the new technology in there that does make it significantly different. Come on. Summarize it, it's basically patented technology. You can read them as well as I can. Pure ozone all the way down to there's no moving parts in this thing. Come on. I'm still kept with my green premise. I haven't created anything but oxygen and hydrogen. That's all I've done. Let's talk about the reaction chamber. Hey, Clint, this is not a lab, a chem lab. This is the swimming pool. What do you got a reaction chamber there for? Well, it just so happens the reaction chamber is going to be a dual type action. You're going to get not as the product family that you're going to be using, they're called multi-cyclones. You're not only going to get filtration out of this, but you're also going to get it as a reaction chamber. The reaction is going to speed up because you're going to be mixing everything at high speed. The contact time of the ozone, hydroxyl radicals, and hydrogen peroxide are going to be effectively in contact with whatever it needs from an organic basis to destroy it. Sweet. You get another two for here. Not only does it do the reaction, but because of the hydrocyclonic action of these, the Dyson stuff, the Dyson effect, you're going to now remove all your particles out of there at the same time. 96% of 30, 20 to 30 micron and above. Gee, Clint, that sounds like a sand filter. Pretty darn close, guys. It's pretty darn close to a sand filter, because what does a sand filter do? It takes it down to 5, 10 micron, 3 micron if it's DE. We're already taking out everything 20 microns and above. So what do you got? You got a polisher, basically, instead of your sand filter and things doing all the work. Put one of these in. So again, it's do, you get two for one. You get, you get the um, reaction chamber, which mixes up this. And I'll show it to you in a little animation here in just a second. Here's a cutaway, just to give you an idea what it looks like on the inside. I've had a lot of people stop by the booth outside. You've got these multiple small hydrocyclones all inside here. Here's a blow up of one of them. And what they do is they spin that water extremely fast. The faster it spins, the more debris that's removed, the more particulate that's removed. As opposed to putting a big old cyclone on there that's going to spin like that, velocities are too low. Velocities are really high here. That's why you get high efficiency. Another patented product. This doesn't want to work all the time. So we had it tested at NSF. That's all the results of NSF. 
key do you want to look at is right here. Is right here. 30, 20 to 30 mic, 20, 30 to 40 microns, 96.8 removal of all the particulate. 96.8% of all the particulates removed. And there's no moving parts. There's nothing to replace. There's no media in this. It's all done through a new technology. All right, let me just quickly show you, and then I'm almost done. I'll sum up. Okay? Okay, good enough. This is just a start of showing you a little animation here of how this product works. You can start to see the water comes out of the pool, through the pump, up through the product, and out and then through the filter. Simple, right? Come on, next slide. Now, this one here, what we want to see is, we want to see how it works. You can start to see the dirt coming up here. It goes to the side. I don't know if you can see my mouse. No, you can't. It comes up, it comes up through the center, tangentially out, starts to spin. As it spins in here, the velocities increase, just like a tornado. On the outside, it's high, uh, a low pressure, excuse me, high pressure on the inside is low pressure. The particles go to the outside, the inside, the water stays clean. If I move this forward a little bit more, you can start to see what it does. You can start to see the spin. And out of the center, up to the center of it, goes the clean water. And you can start to see the particles dropping in the bottom. Now, how do you get the stuff out of there? You'll see that red, red valve on there. You're going to see that open. And it draws out four gallons of water each time you flush it. Here it goes. You'll start to see the debris going out. You're done. You didn't turn your pump off. You don't have to shut anything down. You're done. You've now finished cleaning it. Four gallons of water, about maybe six, seven seconds. Customers love that. Oops, I want to go to the next slide. All right, I'm going to go a little faster because I'm short on time. Basically, this is easy to install, guys. You can do it on a standard pool. You don't need to do anything special. It works the same way I've told you before. You've injected the ozone. You've gone and reacted every, everything. You have put it through the powerful oxidizers. You've filtered it, put more peroxide in, and around it goes. Here's a simple diagram of how the system is set up for those who like those kinds of diagrams. Quite simple. Nothing different than a standard setup, except you've got, in the center of this, you have the controller. Controller controls the whole thing. Come on. Standard operating set points, no different than any other balanced pool. You know, I'm doing things special here, guys. Give me a standard balanced pool and just change to this. Keep your residuals a peroxide between 100 and 150, and you've got yourself a system that's going to be sanitized to the max. All right, how much does it cost? I'm not getting into the dollars and cents, but you're looking 20 to 30% more on your chemicals when all is said and done. Hell, if they're spending $600 to $1,000 for a backyard pool, what are you talking, a few hundred bucks? And you've now got it so that it's going to feel like swimming in, in fresh water. I like to call it champagne because of all the oxygen that's in the water. It's bubbling. Us guys, we end up with little bubbles on, our, on the hairs of our legs from all the oxygen in the water. We feel better when we get out of there because we've absorbed that oxygen into our body. I love that picture of the guy kissing the fish. It's a smart system. It talks to you. It'll contact your smartphone. It'll tell you when it's in trouble. If it is, it'll tell you, I got to cut my speech. That's what it's going to tell me right now. <laughs> I'm going to try to move a little faster. I apologize for taking so long. But what's most important is, 
the invention of the third invention here is a simple way the homeowner can go out to the pool, take a strip, dip it in, and they now can read how much hydrogen peroxide residual, remember we have to have a measured residual, residual in there, you now got your first simple test that we developed to be able to tell, I got 50, I got 100, I got 150, I got 200 parts per million of hydrogen peroxide. Yep, I don't need to adjust anything, it's perfect, let's go on. Let's do my day. Couldn't do that before, guys. Nobody had a test out there that could do that. We got it. Again, make sure you got a balanced pool, gentlemen. Make sure your phosphate levels are low. We measure everything with ORP. You guys are very familiar with ORP, I'm sure. But we figured out which ORP settings we got to have. And it looks like for a 15,000 gallon pool, we typically have to have an ORP between 450 and 550 millivolts. And here is your, you guys have seen this, I'm sure, where you've got the reduction of all your, uh, all your inactivation goes on as you get, here's your 500, here is your time it takes. I know it's a lot of techie stuff, guys. Please, I hope I didn't bore you too much with this stuff, but there was a lot of research that went in this because it's so exciting of the new technology. I'm going to sum up. Sorry, I'm skipping these. By the way, this will be available. You sure I don't have more time, Terry? I'm going to sum up at the back end. I do have to tell you that China beat us here. China's okayed this for commercials. Donald Trump's right, if you've heard him speak. China's beating us at everything. We've got to start getting get on the ball here. We've got to bring in the technologies. They're embracing it. The People's Republic of China, gentlemen, the communist government is putting it in because they think it's a great new technology. We can't even get it in the door. We've got too many regulations. I did make it to the summary. We got 1,000 installations worldwide. We're doing commercial installations, not here in the United States. We're doing water features. It is sweeping around the globe, and we will be the last one, unfortunately, to get it here in the United States. So why am I speaking about backyard pools when I should be talking about commercial here at this? is because where does it start? It starts in backyard. It upgrades to the commercial. You can update it. You can upgrade it. it. You get rid of the chlorine, and the small scale can be upgraded to the large scale. And with that, I think we've held true to our green premise. And I do appreciate Terry's perseverance here with me, <laughs> taking extra time. I didn't realize it was quite as long, but I do get pretty passionate about this stuff. I thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Clint. Sorry, we won't have time for questions because you sure uh, it's not a you microphone can... issue here with this. <laughs> but you can talk to Clint afterwards, and uh, if you have questions, and uh, we got to let the next session get ready to come in here. Thanks for attending. Thanks again, guys. We're right outside the door.